Hi, Tanya. Hello. Hello. And hi, everyone. Welcome to Cut the Clutter. Today's interview is with Tanya Bernadette, cutest name I've ever heard in the whole wide world. <laughs> And um, she is a personal stylist. She's had experience shopping with singles at Match Date Love and It's Just Lunch, which I should probably check out. Um, and she's used her creative styling for photo shoots in Northwest Mom and D-List Magazine. She's had background experience with Lululemon, um, Pipe and Row, and more. And her blog is so so incredible and really thought out and very personalized, which I loved. And it's had recognition in Ann Taylor's Loft Brand Ambassador Program. Um, so welcome to the interview. Thank you so much. This is a topic that I just can get overly excited about because it's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I am really excited because there's so much depth to this and I think people need to know about it. Yes, absolutely. So tell us um, a little bit about your journey. So it, I see here that you started your business in 2009, which is right around the same area and time that I did as well. So tell me what what for you sparked that interest for you to follow your passion and bring this gift into the world? Oh, it's such a long journey. Like thinking back, like how many years actually went by? It's been, I can't even count, but it's been like eight or nine years yep. since I've had the business. And it's been a journey. From the beginning, there was something in me that I wanted to help people. I think that personal shopping is something that a lot of people at that time didn't know was available to them. And TV shows like What Not to Wear and Rachel Zoe made it more of a household name. Like people could actually afford having somebody help them. Mm -hmm. And in Seattle, it's a little bit difficult because in Seattle we have this sense of like, well, I don't have to dress up for work because people like made this norm about it. But there are people that they're like, I actually want to feel good in what I'm wearing. I want to go to work and express who I am. So I wanted to create a place and that blog that you were talking about is my creative outlet where I get to help people feel connected to themselves. I love it so much and I love that you touched on like the Northwest vibe because it is so true and it's something that I love and appreciate about the Northwest. It is not a trendy Wendy city by any means because it's wet here all the time. <laughs> But with that, when you do need to feel a confidence boost, when you do need to get ready for the day, it's really a, a, a tricky essence of bringing that out in somebody. And I have hired in the past um, a personal stylist. And when I was in my 20, I was 21 when I first started my business. So personally, I felt so young and I wasn't Ann Taylor but I wasn't forever 21 either yeah. and so it was really challenging for me to present myself at a young age as a business owner and so I hired an expert to come in and help me and say okay this tube top with this blazer <laughs> situation is not so sexy. <laughs> too and when I start my process with people I like to start in their closet because they carry things from their past of where they used to be the body they used to have the life that they used to have they have things of where they would like to be when they lose weight when they get the job when they move out of town and then they have things that are semi working for their present selves but it kind of hides their insecurities like they don't feel good about their body so they're wearing things that are bigger or they feel like at the time of their life that they want to look a certain way so they wear everything super tight. But that's not what is reflecting the best parts of themselves. So what I do is I go in, I take things out, and we're very honest about where they want to be, where they're going, and to feel comfortable with who they are. Um, and not thinking about what their coworkers are going to say what their family is going to say just about who they are and that's a very deep thing it's very difficult for them sometimes yes and so for anyone watching or listening right now so what tanya does is she will actually come to your home and do a 
clutter audit of your clothing and say you should never wear this probably. If you love this, this is what you can pair it with. And just that, there's so much more that you offer, but for me, I found that tremendous value, especially for clients that have beautiful walk-in closets full of yeah. stuff, and they typically wear the same three to five things all the time, just mm-hmm. picking outfits for them, because again, it's that objective set of eyes mm-hmm. from a different perspective saying, well, why don't you put this with this? You're like, I never would have done that. Yeah. And it, there are things you could already have in your closet or finding key pieces for you that highlight these certain attributes that you're talking about. Yeah, and it's clutter has to do with your identity as well. So people, like you mentioned, I'm glad that you mentioned your own experience of hiring a stylist. You were at a point in your life where you're like, this isn't reflecting who I am. And what clutter does is that we like to hold on to things because we kind of know where we're going, but we need our surroundings to reflect that. Right. And if your clothing isn't reflecting it, you need to hire someone sometimes because you go out on your own. I could give I could give you, I could give anybody a list of items after meeting them and say, you need these five items. But And I could give you and somebody else the same list, and because of what you're used to, color-wise, style-wise, you will go out and get the same things that you've been gravitating towards and that person will get the same things they've been gravitating towards and it's not helping them. Absolutely. I remember during my styling session, she had picked out a few pieces and I'm looking at it like, oh my gosh. (laughs) She picked out this crushed velvet blazer and just looking at it on the hanger, one, I felt intimidated. Two, I was like, would never have picked that out. And at the time, you know, I'm 21 and it was like Banana Republic or something like that. And it was, you know, out of my normal price range as well, which the whole process at first made me feel uncomfortable. But what I learned is that taking time to appreciate specific key pieces, you can use them all throughout your closet. And so it, it's it's same within your home. It's not about having a bunch of shoes, a bunch of clothes hanging out. It's about having key pieces that are really versatile. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know anything about home, just to let you know. (laughs) Because I'm a personal shopper. They're like, I mean, I do, my home does reflect who I am and where I want to be and everything. Like when I come into my office, I'm like, I feel powerful. That's the word I want to use. I feel like I am in power when I'm in my office. But there's people like I grew up with my mom and I think that sort of affected um, a lot of decisions I make in my home and in my closet is that sometimes people hold on to things because they they need to find their identity as well. And if you hold on to a lot of things and you walk around your home, you kind of sometimes don't know where you want to be or who you are. So there's there's a deeper thing with that. And once you take it all out, you're like, this is clear. Everything becomes clear, which is, I think, an amazing experience to have. So when you're doing a clutter uh, closet audit um, with somebody, what's your typically like the first phase? Do you just take everything out or do you go piece by piece? What's your strategy? So my strategy, I'm sure you've seen what not to wear and they like grab everything and put it away. I don't believe, because we have to be realistic. I work with people that, I work with people I'd say middle income. I don't work with celebrities. And I'm just working with everyday people. People work at Amazon, Microsoft, Starbucks. Even people from Nordstrom hire me when they become a sales associate. Um, So what we do first is I go through their closet and I I look through everything a little bit. And while I'm looking through, I'm asking them questions. I want them to feel comfortable with me because it's a very personal thing to be in someone's closet. You see, they they might be scared that I might criticize them, that I might be judging them, and that's not what the point is. So first I go through, I'm looking at what colors they're looking at, what styles they've been gravitating towards, and I take mental notes, and I start picking up things that I know should go. They're dated, or just seeing their body type and them talking to me about their life, I'm like, this isn't gonna work, this isn't gonna work. So I make things that are kind of, there's no question to it, like, they just have to go. And then I go back, and I take the things that that I do question, I'm like, this is really cute, but stands out from everything you own, so I want to see it on. Or a color, there's sometimes like two colors, and you're like, you only have two items this color, 
like let's talk about that so I take the things that really stand out to me and I have them try it on and we talk about it so that's kind of the process and then the rest of it hangs and at the end um, I ask them let's go through because these things could work for your life and we could make it work and I have them go through and take some things that they question like there might be a shirt that they're like this looks I like the style and it's on trend but does it fit me like does it fit my body does it fit my life so then we go through the things that they question so I, I, it's so awesome that you go back and reflect. And a lot of times when I'm in closets and what I, what we do is we go in and not so much audit them, but we're organizing them by color, length, and style, or we're giving them a, a remodel of their closet because they have some weird, funky little closet rod. Um, and so uh, something unique that, ha- there's a lot of things that happen in a closet, you wouldn't think, but while we're in there sometimes i'll come across like oh my husband this happened just the other day with a client that i love she's like my sweet husband bought this for me i will never wear it (laughs) and i was like okay let's have a conversation about it so there was all this emotion of guilt for not wearing it and guilt for trying to wear it there were all these emotions tied to this cute little jacket my approach to her was, do you want to wear it? She goes, yeah, I would love to find something that I could actually wear this with and it would make him happy. And so yeah. we ended up pulling an outfit together for it. And she's like, oh my gosh, I never would have done that. you know." So oh. have you ever found working with a client where they have certain emotions attached to a piece of clothing? Oh my gosh, that's very common. So when you're in the closet, you know what the emotional pieces are too because they're at the very ends of the closet and you don't see them. The one that got to me the most and I had to have a conversation with her, which obviously I get deep into people's lives because I'm in their home, I'm in their closet, we talk about things, but this was kind of the deepest conversation I had to have with somebody to talk to her husband. She had... Uh, and people don't think about jewelry. Jewelry is part of your accessories. She had a huge jewelry box, a standing jewelry box. And we go through her closet. We took everything out. And she's like, oh, I forgot to show you one thing. And she opens a jewelry box, all fine jewelry. Her life does not need fine jewelry and diamonds and pearls. Like, she worked at a school. She was a teacher. And she was like, my husband, every, and she had been married like 20 years every holiday, every birthday, every anniversary, he buys me jewelry. It tore my heart because you could tell she wanted to wear it. And she's like, how do I add this to my life? And I told her that she also needed to have a conversation with him about what jewelry is and maybe doing it like a one time a year thing because she felt guilty for not wearing it. And jewelry is a very special item too. So you take it out, like if they're going on a date, I'm like, wear it when you go on a date. De- get decked out, do the ring, do the necklace, do the earrings, everything. Um, but she had to have a conversation with her husband, like, if you're going to do jewelry, let's do something I could wear every day. And then for the special moments, let's do like the fine jewelry thing. Because money also goes into your clothing. And with your spouse or whoever is gifting you things, sometimes you have to be honest. Like if your mom is always buying you something when she goes on travels, you have to be like, mom, how about you not give me a postcard, you know, like write me a nice note. Yeah. Because it's part of the clutter. It comes in your home, all those little gifts that you get, you know. So. And I always tell clients, too, that you you are holding more guilt than they probably will. Yeah. Um, you're harboring these feelings. If you, one, can have the conversation or, two, gift it to somebody that you know would love and appreciate it. Because uh, Oprah said a really beautiful thing. She's like, once a gift is given to you, that was the moment. That was the experience. That was the moment. Now it's past and it's hanging in your closet making you feel guilty every time you walk in there. She's like, that's not what the gift is for. Um, And so I always try to bestow upon that advice that the gift is in the moment and what you do after that should harbor the same emotion of gifting it along, having a meaningful conversation with the person um, is so beneficial. And so let's talk a little bit more about getting into people's attachment for holding on to skinny clothes. How do you feel about oh that? My gosh, it's a hard thing because especially it's a woman thing. Like I have not had, 
I've not gone into a man's closet where he has his skinny clothes. It's a woman thing. And for us, body image, especially now with Instagram, with social media, I notice how much more difficult it's getting for women to accept their bodies. And as a stylist, I'm actually working on, I don't know what my book want, is going to be, but I want to do something to empower women because I see so much of it. And working with us very sensitive because I have clients that they hire me and they hire me and they say, well, we're gonna shop for now, but I need to buy things a little bit smaller because I plan on losing 10 to 20 pounds. And I have to be very honest with them and it's not to shatter their dreams, it's not to shatter what they're doing, but I have to be more specific. So I ask them, are you on a diet currently? Have you already made changes? Like I have to be very specific because if I'm buying them clothes that will be too small and they don't end up losing the weight, which I'm, it's not to it's not to offend all of us. Like I know we all have our goals of where we want to be with our body, but sometimes we imagine things that we're not actually putting into practice. And I want to say most of the women I work with do not end up losing those ten to twenty pounds, unless mm -hmm. that's why I have to ask them. Unless they're currently on a diet plan, an exercise plan that's working for them, because they imagine it. They're like, oh, I got a new job, or I got this, or I'm dating. I'm gonna lose it. I'm like, no, we're not gonna talk about where you're at. We need to talk about what you're doing now. And if right now you're not trying to lose the weight, then we have to buy things that work for you now because you are beautiful. Yeah. You have to feel good where you are today. It's so true. And I hope that you write a novel about that because I've every time I'm in a closet, I have conversations. And just yesterday I had a client and people think, you know, that's a vanity thing or whatnot. But let's say that you you know we're pregnant and your weight fluctuates or you have a sickness um health condition and your weight fluctuates it's really hard for women because when we want to feel better we're either craving objects or we're craving food instead of soul fulfillment mm -hmm. and so I always kind of, even though we're talking about a closet, there's so yeah. much soul connection that happens between women in this wonderful space of our home. And I love that you advocate for loving where you are now because it is challenging, but I can even speak to this. I've been, you know, I'm 150 pounds now and I was 114 pounds 10 years ago when I was an NFL cheerleader and I still felt like I had the little muffin and my legs were measured and they weren't skinny enough and I wasn't blonde enough and you, so you start to get in that very unhealthy pattern of not enough. And so working right with what you have now and realizing you are enough and I can with the help of an expert, look at my body differently so that I love it and dress it to where I feel confident right now. It's huge. It is. And I always, and I know because I have fluctuated in weight the past few years as well. When you have that skinny pant on that does not fit oh. the whole day, the whole day you're thinking about it, why are you going to make yourself suffer like that? And then mm. when you have the pant that fits perfectly, you go throughout your day, you don't even think about it don't think about it and you just feel good that's so true thank you for bringing this up so I want to jump over to your blog real quick because as I was doing some research one of the first blogs I saw was just yeah. the most adorable post I've ever seen and it says find your morning wake-up calling um, and I'm gonna read a little excerpt from it here because I think it's so important and I would really love for you to talk a little bit about your morning routine and you yeah. say, how you start your day and wake up in the morning is just as important as how you go to sleep and end your night. We get to create and change our negative and positive cycles when we become aware of our priorities and motivations. It's up to you to decide how you want to live your life every day. So speak a little bit about that because this is something that I've recently been getting more into a routine, more simplified, more intentional about self-care in yeah. the morning and at night. So talk to me a little bit about that. So I believe completely. I, my whole life, I, well not my whole life, but since I was about 16 years old, my uncle actually bought me a book and I, I still remember it, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. 
I read through that book, and after reading that book, I was constantly moved by motivational books. I wanted it in my life because it felt so positive. And now with my busy lifestyle, I don't get to read as much, so I listen to a lot of material on Audible. Um, and so where that comes in is I like to take things from everything I learn. You have to take and adapt because you're never going to be exactly like the book wants you to be. And that's why I like the exercises in it because you have to find yourself and relate to it as much as you can and what you can relate to. And one of the books um, about the morning rituals, I can't remember the exact name of the book, but it talks about morning rituals that will help you be successful. I read that and I can identify with many things of it that I have done with my life, but it made me realize that a lot of people are reading this book and feeling that if they don't do these things, they're not going to be successful. And then when you don't get it done, like things happen. Our life is messy sometimes, but we have we get to decide how we want to live too and how we, how we take that situation and change it. So I noticed that sometimes in my morning, I wasn't going to wake up at 5.30 a.m. to read the book and light my candle and, you know, like the whole ritual thing. And sometimes at night, like if I didn't do it during the day, I'm like, I'm not going to let that ruin my day. I still want to be connected with myself and do what I need to do to feel good. So I'm going to do it at night. I have the evening available. I worked all day. I woke up because my mind sometimes, I'm not sure if it happens to you, but I'm very creative. And sometimes the first thing I want to do in the morning is not answer an email. I need to sit and just write everything that I was feeling, or maybe I had a bad dream, I need to write about it. And it's not about work, it's about feeling good for myself before I get to the other things. And I do want my routines and I need my rituals because I'm an entrepreneur, but sometimes I just move it in the day because I can't do it exactly the same time every single day. So don't be hard on yourself is what I was trying to say. Oh, it's such a beautiful, I love your blog posts and the photos, the whole thing was just too much. I'm like, this is so good. <laughs> Um, and it's so true, you know, and I revert back to Oprah because if I could close my eyes and imagine her life as busy as it is, there's so much beautiful moments for her. Um, yeah. She talks about sitting under her oak trees and reading a book. I'm like, oh, when was the last time I sat outside and read a book, you know? So it's, yeah. it's, it's taking little moments and realizing that this is your life and you can craft it exactly how you want to. You may not be an entrepreneur, but you can love the clothes you put on your body and feel good about it. Yeah. You can love walking into your closet and instead of feeling overwhelmed or that you just want to shut the door quickly on it. <laughs> so it's, it's, these are little practices and I love the morning ritual something that I ha have been doing here on the farm because I had been so overwhelmed with moving back and remodeling and starting multiple businesses um, I thought okay if I'm gonna do the farm life what does it really look like okay I'm gonna wake up I'm gonna let the dog out. We're gonna go walk and open the gate. And while this is happening, the coffee is gonna be brewing. You know, these little tiny things that set the stage for your morning. And just as important as your morning routine is finding out what to wear or preparing ahead of time. So can you speak a little bit about the benefits of picking out your outfits, you know, so that you're prepared? Um, how do you feel about that? Oh my gosh, I have like a whole thing to talk about this. Yay! Uh, yeah, so I actually, in the process, I use a three-step process. Cleanse, replenish, and merch. Cleanse is a clean out of the closet. Replenish is finding the right pieces to add to your wardrobe. And the merge is bringing your current closet and the new pieces together. So for the past eight years I've had my business, the merge part is where I took pictures of complete outfits, head to toe, based on their life. And I always add two different shoe options because you never know where you're going to go. Like, you might like the outfit, but you're like, I can't wear the heel with it. I need to do something flat. So I always give two shoe options and includes jewelry, bags, everything. And this past, like, few months, I had been dreaming up of an app, which I still haven't made because it's so much work. But I had been dreaming up of an app and wrote everything down probably a year ago. And then a few months ago, I looked at it again. I'm like, I really need an app like this in my life. And I believe in manifesting and bringing everything you need. 
So it was weird. I was looking at it, and the next day I went on LinkedIn, which I never go on LinkedIn, and this advertisement comes up for a company, and it said, the app for every stylist. And I click on it, and the person that made it was someone who contacted me five years ago oh, wow. and already knew me. It was like the weirdest connection. That is so cool. But any, Yeah, it's the weirdest connection. But anyways, with that said, um, the lookbook, which is what I call everything I make, they get 35 looks head to toe. And I organize it for every client's different. The 35 looks could be broken up into your casual weekend wear, work wear, evening. Or some for a housewife, you know what? It's all about everyday casual wear that just feels good. My clients love it. I have clients that because of their budget, sometimes they can only see me once a year or every two years. And they tell me how they use that religiously because they can print things out and they can have it pinned up they don't have to think about like they already know that everything that we purchase they love but now they could just look through the lookbook and figure out what they really like and with the app it's very helpful because where before it was pdf form with the app they can put likes on it it's only between me and the client they can like things they can comment on it like saying i really love this sweater i need more outfits with it because i find that i wear it a lot so it makes their life so much easier do you know how, I mean, you know, anybody watching, you know how many times you go into your closet, you have a big meeting, you want to look so presentable, and you know you know what your outfits are for your meetings, but you try everything on again because you're like, I don't know what goes. You forget. Like, you might have a go-to outfit, but you forget it. So having a lookbook is, like, the reliable thing that they know, and especially now with them being able to take notes and liking it, they can go back and remember everything, and that's super so easy. Cool. Yeah. One thing that I had mentioned on uh, New Day Northwest, because I love the movie Clueless when I was little. Like, I just aspired to be Cher when I was little. And so I, I was like, how can we modern day realistically have a stylist in our uh, closet? So I took this mount that I got on Amazon for my iPad, which I never use, and I'm trying to figure out how do I use this thing more because I feel guilty for having it and not using it, right? So I actually mounted it in my closet, and you can use it right there for if you have lookbook and you guys are communicating right within your closet. So it's just simply mounting an iPad that you probably have laying around somewhere and putting it in your closet and right there you can have a personal connection with your stylist, pick out outfits. Yes. Um, and I love that you say about different transitions in life because as women it is so important too because you know, if let's say you are an entrepreneur in your 20s, that has a certain look and if you're traveling a lot like I do, I never know where I am from one day to the next. I have to have looks that are kind of preset and easily changeable because sometimes you do put an outfit on you're like nah, I'm not feeling that right now like yeah. you touched on having a power outfit was so important one thing that I've realized with a lot of my mentors is that yes they'll have the Louis Vuitton shoes but they have one pair and yeah. they'll repurpose <laughs> their outfit so they don't have you know most of the wealthy people that I've been mentored under They'll have like one to three power suits and that's it. So if you actually travel with them, they're not packing 25 expensive outfits. There's just no way. Um, so really utilizing what you have, repurposing it. I love the idea of having that connection to a stylist right in your closet. So I wasn't yeah. familiar with Lookbook. That is so cool. Yeah, and so also, there, like you mentioned, the Louis Vuitton, and I work with clients that travel a lot. So they could click on the shoe and their looks. They're like, oh, I like this outfit, but I want other ways to wear it. So they click on the shoe or they click on the sweater they really like, and it will say, five looks created, view them. So you could click on it and see all your, so for traveling, it's super easy. You're like, I'm going to take this shoe. How many ways can I wear it? And it makes packing so much easier. I love that. Yeah. I just bought, I... My new consultant is my 17-year-old uh, niece, which I'm not sure if that's good or bad just yet. But <laughs> I'm in Nordstrom Rack, and I'm like, I want a pair of really cool, trendy, but age-appropriate shoes. And they had these, like, metallic penny loafer-looking things with the back cut out. And I just text her to see what she would say. And she's like, 
Yep, I like those. Now you have to find an outfit that goes with them. <laughs> but you can take a piece that you love oh, yes. and find ways to work it in because obviously I'm not going to trendy Wendy dress, but I can have yeah. like a really fun shoe and a more casual outfit that works with my style. And so I love all of this so much. It's so fun. <laughs> I, is there anything that you would want to offer to somebody who's either watching us today or listening? How could they cut the clutter from their lives or even their closet to live a more full life? I believe that they have to be very honest with themselves. And usually when people, I know when people find you, it's the same as when people find me, they're going through something happening in their life and that's why they're bringing somebody in to help them. And if you can't hire either one of us, Take the time to sit down, quiet time, no social media, nothing, like sit down and ask yourself hard questions. Why am I holding on to these things? Is it, is it something related to my past? Is it some insecurity I'm having right now? Being very honest with ourselves can sometimes be difficult because we always want to be happy, happy, happy. Uh, we want to think positive about everything, which is wonderful, but getting down to that deep stuff will help us release clutter and it will help us be able to identify where we want to be and who we are right now. What are three things we should get out of our closet right now? Oh my gosh. For men or women? Women. Women. Okay. One thing that we need to get out are the empire waste. Mm -hmm. I am not a fan of the empire waste because there is a point in our life where it looked good, but now we don't want to look like we are pregnant. We don't want anybody to question us. Um, also, be careful. I love trends, and this is the thing. As a stylist, I want to help you look for trends, but be honest with yourself when you try them on. Like right now, we have a lot of like the big billowy sleeves and the big giant shirts. It does not work for everyone, and if it's in the magazines, it doesn't mean that it works for you. I do believe in trying it and seeing how you feel in it, but if you find one, find one that skims your body just a little bit. Don't try to hide under that. Um, and the other one is wearing uh, leggings all the time. It feels comfortable because it stretches with you and bounces back. But don't wear it because it's kind of a safe item. Do open up to wearing pants, to jeans. There's beautiful dresses. There's beautiful skirts. Sometimes when we gravitate towards something because it's comfortable, doesn't mean it's the right item that we should be wearing. Yes, like um, I will have to bring up shoulder pads because I was just in a closet and I just <laughs> quickly pulled everything that had shoulder pads in it. And I'm like, one, that tells me what era this came from. <laughs> And two, we're just not doing that anymore. Your shoulders are really great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now we have the cold shoulder where it shows and exposes your shoulders. So show yes. off the shoulder. That's the right. <laughs> the inverted shoulder style. That's right. That's so funny. Thank you so much, Tanya, for taking the time. I could do 50,000 interviews with you. It's such a fun topic, and it really can be fun. I think for a lot of people, it can be super overwhelming. They're just not feeling it, not feeling sexy, don't want to go in that room, and that really can all be flipped around on its head if you're just open to the process. Um, because wherever you are, however you're feeling, you're beautiful right where you're at. And I love that message that you're sharing and the work that you're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. So to learn more about Tanya, Bernadette, Cutie Pie, and all that she has to offer, please visit www.tanyab.com. That's T-A-N-N-Y-A-B.com. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm,